Um, so today we're going to be doing the ink part of the fish and I wanted to also just talk about drawing a little bit. So I will switch to my trusty little camera. There we go. So we're doing this fish basically um, that I sort of made up from a real fish that existed. And I think, um, so I've just been like following a lot of watercolor artists on some forums recently and it always comes up the question of being able to draw and like what do you do if you can't draw and all this stuff and is it okay to trace from pictures online and things and I think generally speaking especially if you're taking your own photographs of things for reference it's it's okay to trace it and paint it and it's not necessarily cheating um, it gets a little bit tricky when you're using other people's images though um, so I think it's important to be able to draw um, just so that the other reason is if you're always tracing from things, it eventually blocks your creativity uh, and you kind of get stuck with what's in front of you and you can't really deviate. And the other issue is in painting. Um, so painting is basically rendering and the, your ability to be good at rendering is kind of dependent on your drawing ability. So the better you become at drawing, the better you're going to become at painting, essentially. Um, they are separate skills. You don't have to be good at rendering in pencil, which is what I think some people think drawing is. But I'm talking about more as understanding drawing in terms of structure and being able to properly like, deal with forms and other things. Hey, everyone. So I wanted to actually just refilm this section um, of the drawing section only because I wanted to include some stuff that I had forgotten that I wanted to include when I did the live class. Um, so this is a little drawing of my niece. And I learned a really great uh, technique for transferring drawings. And this is actually a really te interesting technique because um, it's the one that's used by mural artists and like spray paint artists to scale their drawings to massive scales without losing any um, any proportion. So uh, it's it works a little bit like the grid and I wanted to share this with you. So this is the drawing and I just wanted to show you um, the reference that I created. So this is the reference and as you can see on the photo um, so this was manipulated afterwards in photoshop um, on this photo there's like basically the alphabet and a whole bunch of numbers all over these act as markers so when um when spray paint artists are going to paint a mural they will draw sort of random marks or i like letters and numbers because they're recognizable but they'll just sort of draw at random all over the surface of their wall and then they'll take a photo of that and then they'll go into like photoshop or something and um place it over their drawing or their reference image that they're going to do um and i do have another one i'm not sure if i remember to open it here so the other one is my nephew and as you can see on this one i just oh so here's my nephew and then here's sort of what I started doing. And as you can see, I didn't finish it because I wanted to show you how the number system kind of works. So I first drew out the numbers on the page and then I took a photo on my page and then overlaid it in Photoshop onto my nephew's face. And so it basically gives me something like a grid. And I actually have a really hard time working with the grid because I get lost very quickly, even with a really small number of squares. It, just a method that confuses me more than anything. So this is, um, it's probably overkill for something this size. Um, however, I do find it really useful. So I wanted to share it because I thought it was a really nice and innovative method that people have kind of come up with for, for like helping to draw and also to scale drawings uh, to massive sizes. So I did want to share that and I had forgotten. Um, so in terms of drawing koi fish, I'm actually just going to pull up a reference, any reference from Google. Um, it just kind of helps me a little bit and I'm not necessarily going to completely trace it, but 
it just kind of helps me a little bit. So usually what will happen is, and after you do a few of these, I find I can just start making them up, but um, I haven't drawn one in a couple days and you will have resty days with your drawing. So that is something to keep in mind, like go easy on yourself because it's not that easy, honestly. Um, but usually what I like to do to draw something like, well, anything like a koi fish or even, even figures like human figures is to basically just start with the spine and it's usually some sort of an s curve so this fish kind of comes like this and then the tail does all kinds of crazy stuff this way and you can kind of draw things out loosely and light at first so i'm hoping you do see this a little bit but um i then go in and sort of start marking off important parts of the fish so he's got his mouth up here and then if i come down here it gets a little bit wider in through the body. And I'm doing an arc because the, the fishes are rounded. So, and I'm just sort of like keeping track of the midpoint and the fish kind of gets smaller as it goes down. So from here, now I have sort of like, almost like a grid honestly to work from. Uh, and then I can just go in and start fleshing out some of my details. So I know the eyes are going to kind of be in here. And then the fish actually gets larger. And then I basically just have to join up those arcs that I made. So if I want to come across here... I can kind of draw where the next eye might go since I already have that eye space sort of established. And I'm just going to come around here and draw out. So this curves around so the fish does get a little bit wider on this side. And then I'm just going to kind of trace into this. And if I want to, I can kind of bring this back in a little bit to follow my S curve a little bit better. You don't need to be perfect right away. Um, and I honestly highly recommend filling a sketchbook of bad drawings because you actually will learn a lot from just doing bad drawings. Um, you'll get better surprisingly quickly doing a sketchbook of bad drawings. And you don't even have to show anyone ever. You can keep it like a diary and instead of writing, draw. And the advantage is that your painting skills, because essentially um, painting is, essentially what happens is you are only as good at rendering something as you are as good at drawing it. So we can kind of cut a lot of corners with, um, like tracing and stuff, but in the long run, you're going to find that it sort of impedes your creativity. You're going to always be stuck with the exact references that you have on hand, and you're not going to be able to sort of deviate from that. Even if you need to, you're going to kind of like be stuck with what you have. And it then just becomes really hard to create your own thing. So this is sort of the method that I use. And even if I know that I'm going to do like 10 bad drawings of koi fish um, before I decide to maybe trace from a reference and then lightly change it or even massively change it. Um, at least I know that I've sort of understood the fish a little bit. So eventually you do get better. And I will honestly, if I sit down in an evening, I usually like to do a few drawings because I know my first ones are going to be really bad. If there's like a warm up that happens almost like if you're have to dance for example or if you play instruments you do need to warm up before you become good at it for that day um so i also like to warm up with my drawings so i allow myself to do some pretty bad initial drawings and i know if i just keep going they're gonna slowly improve with with time and with my evening and also with weeks and days and sometimes you just have a bad day and sometimes you have a really great day and you're not really sure what happened and you're drawing it's phenomenal so that's something to just kind of consider and like forgive yourself over 
if your drawing isn't if your drawing skills aren't what you want them to be or if you do a bad one so i'm just like really happily drawing my lines right now i'm not really paying attention but as you can see just by doing this i have a fairly decent shape of a koi fish and then i just go in from there and start adding the volumes and then you can also use some of these lines to um continue the shape of the volume so if i want like well this one actually comes black here but i can sort of follow these curves if i want this to maybe come up orange here now i can use the curve of this line that helps the volume read on the side and then all of my scales if i want to draw scales on these I know that they can kind of go in this direction and then I can just sort of use these points. I'm going to do them really big. Obviously they're going to get smaller as they go toward the side and then they can kind of come in this way and then just overlapping as they go. And actually even with this fairly crappy drawing, if I were to continue it and push it um, and add paint on it and watercolor, I know that I could probably actually get something that looks half decent. So it's definitely not a waste of time to do these. Um, and how long is it taking me to do this? It's taking me, it's probably going to take me like 10 minutes to draw this little fish. I understand fish a little bit better in doing it. Um, and then if you take your, I'm actually going to reach for a brush pen, I think, find it. I have a whole bunch of little pens on my desk here. And my brush one always disappears on me. Well, it's not one, but um, I did want to mention also for those that don't have the brush pens, if you want to go darker, you can just sort of double up your lines if you're using. This one is not so bad because I can actually use the body of the brush too, but you'll see as soon as we start to add some interesting line work to these, like we were doing, and some variations, I bet I can come up with a drawing that actually looks fairly interesting. And this is not as good as the ink in the brush as you've seen during the rest of the lesson. You can get a lot more interesting variation. But even with this, I can get something that looks fairly interesting. So yeah, that's pretty much what I do. Um, find your main volumes, find the main shape. But yeah, so those are just the techniques I wanted to show. Like you can try this as alternative to the grid method or go in and try finding your S curve and then figuring out the volumes in the direction of your lines and then linking linking the shapes up and then figuring out whatever you want to do for your fancy little tails and then you just go in oops You go in and add your details. So for my lily pads and things on this, um, it was important that I knew how to draw them because I was there was no way I was going to find a reference exactly online that was going to follow sort of the perspective that I was creating um, in the style. So that's the other reason to kind of practice drawing a bit. And you can literally just feel like 
a book of crappy drawing and no one ever needs to see it. It's like your diary, but it's going to help your art phenomenally in the long run. So that's my speech on drawing. Now we are going to get to our little fish and I'm just going to put my reference up here. So I'm going to follow this because it's going to be easier for me. Um, so for the Indian ink, I'm using like a tiny little detailer brush for this. And actually, I really like to just dab my brush in the ink. So I'm, I'm kind of working out of the top here. You don't need a lot. You need very little. I'm not adding water. I'm going straight out of my little ink well here. Um, and I do like to do a little test before I go on to my actual painting, just on some paper, just because even if it's a brush that I've been using for a long time or whatever, sometimes little hairs can come off them or whatever. So I just wanna make sure that for that day before I actually go onto my painting, I wanna make sure that everything is gonna work how I'm expecting it to do before I ruin it. Like this one right now, I can see that I have the ink on it. There's like a little, um, it's kind of bent a little bit on the top. So either I use it like that or I cut it. And just now that I know that it's there, I'm not going to mess up my painting with it. So that's just a little something that I always like to do before I start painting. Uh, I think I'm going to choose this brush, actually, the bigger one, just because I'm going to get a better line out of it. So I'm just going to take a little bit of paint just in my brush. I don't want it to be dripping because that'll create a big mess. So I just kind of like tap it off. Um, and then from here, we're just going to ink the fish. So when it comes to this style, I think sort of the really important thing, like I was saying in the last video, is um, getting a nice variety of line work. And I tend to like to go heavier on the bottom side and then lighter on the top side. So from here, I'm just going to sort of follow along where we had drawn the fish in. And anywhere where it turns toward the bottom, I'm going to use a little bit more of the body of the brush. And then wherever it uh, sort of turns back to the top, I'm going to go in and use the tip of the brush. So I'm going to let this be fairly thick in here. And I'm going to stop it there because that's where my lily pad is. And then I'm just going to come around in here and it can be fairly thick in this area. And we can start with the outline. It's going to make it probably a little bit easier. And I'm just going to continue around here. And as I come sort of to the top and the, up, the upper side, I guess, of the body here, I'm just going to let that line sort of go thinner. And then in here too in the face, I'm going to go like nice and thin on the top of this little arc here. And then when it goes sort of underneath, that little detail, I'm going to go a little bit thicker and then thin it out again because this little part of the fish is kind of thin. It's like a delicate sort of detail on the fish. And then come into the eye area and be nice and thin on top. So I'm almost like not even touching the fish there. It's just like really, really soft. And then I'm going to come around here and go nice and thin with my line work. So just using the tip. And then as it curves back this way and goes underneath, um, I'm going to do a darker one. And I do know that it's easier to pull the brush than push it. So I think I'm going to turn this this way and attack it from the other direction so that I can pull this way down and then join up the lines there. So that I'm going to get a thicker edge on that side. And then again, for the top, it's near the top of the fish where the light would hit. So I'm just going to do a nice thin line with the tip of my brush. So I'm getting like a variety of thick and thin through the entire piece. <clears throat> and then I'm just going to continue along the tail and make it nice and sort of thin. And especially as I get toward the ends, I want to be really, really thin with this. So 
Um, I do find that turning my paper helps a lot. I'm trying not to do it for the videos, um, but I might have to on this because the line work is so, uh, it's a little bit dependent on me turning the page. And I do like to start outlining it first just so I have it sort of done and over with. So I'm gonna go like nice and soft and pull the brush this way and a nice thin line because the the tail is quite see-through. So I'm thinking a lot about sort of the quality of the item or the thing that I'm drawing as well. Um, and then I'm just gonna, so on the tail part, um, because there's like variation, I'm gonna sort of just allow some thick and thin to happen. So as it kind of weaves in and out of where the detail is, I'm just gonna sort of let that be a little bit like varied. And then I'll do this side. And we're gonna do the um the lily pads next, so or like a little bit later. So I'm just leaving. I'm just kind of going around them for now because they're going to go over top. So, And then same thing with the fin on the top here. I'm just going to sort of go nice and thin on the side that I've decided is the lighter side of my painting, which is on this side. And then on this side, I might allow it to go a little bit thicker as I come into this curve. Just so I can get a feeling of movement and weight in there. And then just kind of going thick and thin until we meet up. And then there's the little fin, so it's the same thing. So I'm going to go like just sort of medium pressure over here. And then as I get to the edge of this fin here, I'm going to allow it to kind of vary its weight around some of these little curves. And I think I drew a little fin in here on this one. So I'm just gonna add it. <laughs> it might be an extra addition, I'm not sure, it's fine. And I'm just going up to the edges of where these little details are crossing over the fish. So the little water details, the little ripples are going over the fish, so I'm stopping there. And same with the, the leaves. Is that good so far, guys? Yeah? Okay. From here, the inside of the fish, this is where it gets fun. And I think we're just gonna only have time to sort of deal with the black for this class and then we'll paint the color next class. Um, so what I did on these, and I didn't draw in my, my design on this actual fish here, but we'll do it now. Um, I kind of followed along the ridge of the fish's body um, for the black area and the orange area. So I just kind of decided a little bit randomly where I wanted my colors to go and I kind of created patches. Um, and it's sort of following, I'm trying to follow, like I said, on the arcs of the fish to sort of help accentuate the way the fish sort of curves around. And then from here, so you could add, um, you could add the masking fluid to the little spots between the, the scales. I'll show you what I'm doing. So you could add masking fluid between these parts, but I actually instead just painted very carefully with the black. And I'm kind of doing a motion 
So let's say that, I'll draw this kind of dark. Let's say that this is where I had my scale. And I know that this little part, I want it to be white. And I've actually just kind of drawn them like this, nice and dark for you. So I just didn't go all the way to the edge. So I kind of used a random brush motion. Uh, even like, I guess you could even say scribbling in a way, um, using sort of the body and the tip of the brush. Uh, and then I filled it in this way. And the reason why I did that is because I wanted something that looked a little bit organic, but was still fairly solid. So I didn't want to have like a rigid, necessarily a rigid line on this. And then for the one above it, that's where I went in and like carefully outlined. And then I went back in and did sort of like almost like scribbling to get those, those arcs. So there's still space between, but I have sort of a filled in black area. And then it gives me something a little bit like this. So it's like sort of defined in some areas and a little bit less defined. And then I went um, a little bit, like I kind of used a little bit more space and white up here and then filled in much more, um, filled in much more solid through here and then let it start breaking up again as it goes down the spine. So it kind of gave a lot of variation in the black. So I'm gonna start here and I know like I want some of the orange to come over it. So on this one, I might actually just do a little bit of black and even almost just some stippling just for that, that line that happens to where the orange part of the fish is. So it's almost like there's some black going into the scales, but it's not, not necessarily a black scale yet. And then from here, I'm going to sort of draw those edges. And I'm going to fill this one in a little bit more solidly, but just leaving just leaving that little edge there where the scale is. And then I just continue around like that. So I'm going to draw in to where those meet over here and then sort of stipple it out. So I get something that's a little bit random, but still filled in. And then on this one, I fill in next to the scale above it that's already black. And then almost go up to the edge of where they meet. And then this is where it gets a little bit more tedious. <laughs> this is why my paintings don't only take like an hour. <laughs> but the result in the end is quite nice. And then so I just like, I'm going to fill in sort of a pattern that I decided. That was a little bit too much ink. I'm just going to leave it, but just watch out for that. Um, and then where it sort of falls off the edge of where I designed the black to go, I'm going to sort of let it stipple down. So let's say, um, on this one, I want it to be fairly solid. And then it sort of falls off the edge right here. So I'm going to let it continue so I see the rest of the scale, but it's not a solid black color. So first I draw the edge, and then I draw the scale in. And I just do that down the center of the fish.
And I just grab a little bit more ink when I need it. I find I actually don't need a lot of ink with this. It's kind of nice. It goes a long way. And it kind of falls off over here. So I'm just going to stipple it. And then draw my little edge where they sort of meet up and then fill it in. So if ever um, you don't have this type of ink, the other thing that we can do with these, and I'm just going to show you guys really quickly. If you have, let's say, um, like a micron pen instead, or any type of black pen. So these are technically kind of watercolor or uh, water resistant. It even says it on here, it says waterproof, but I have noticed even if I let it dry for some reason, if I put water over it, I'll still get a little bit of a bleeding, which is why I prefer the, um, the India ink because the India ink absolutely stays put. But if ever, let's say you had, um, let's say this is like the fish's mouth here. Um, and then it comes in and then it comes around to where the eye is um it's a horrible fish head but you get the idea um if you want to do like varied lines let's say you want this part underneath to be thicker so you could do your outline first and then come in and just do like a secondary sort of line on it and then fill it in And then again, if you wanted it to be thicker down here, you can just fill in a little part there. And then say like under the eye maybe, where it sort of rounds out, you can fill these in. So that way you can sort of have, and then you can stay nice and thin up there on those lines and maybe fill in a little bit down here. But this is one way of getting some more varied lines with a pen instead of with the ink. So with that said, but you would have to do that. I can try it with your micron pens, but as I said, I don't find that they're as waterproof as I would like them to be. Um, so I do prefer the India ink. So I'm just going to fill in this really quickly. You guys can take a little bit more time. If you don't finish it tonight, like that's okay. And anyone who's watching the video, that's good because you'll have a little bit more time to finish it and take the time that you need to finish it. I'm going to kind of rush through. So I do apologize. This is not going to be my best painting ever. Normally I do kind of take my time with this stuff. Um, and I really like to to sit and do it properly. But it does take longer than an hour typically, so. I will just fill these in quickly. And as I said, like, as it gets sort of to the point where the little scales are sort of falling around the side and I want to start letting the black disappear a little bit. I'll just start sort of stippling it a little bit more. So there's a little, it's a little bit less thick looking. And then we can go over this with paint later. So if it's, if we're not seeing the scales um, as clearly as we would like, we can add watercolor over it and it's less harsh looking. Um, but it will help us to fill in those sort of visual gaps. So here I'm just going to allow a little bit of stippling just to get that nice sort of organic look. And then I'm going to come maybe, maybe there's a few little spots on the side of the body. 
So I was going to put one in here. That was way too much ink. I'm just going to let it sit. And just leaving that space between those scales. Maybe just a little bit in there. And I can fill in with another dark color later, like a purple or a blue. And then I had some up in here, so I'm just gonna add a little bit of black as though there is a little, as though there's some, like a little spot here of black. And I'll kind of let it curve a little bit down so it just sort of disappears here. And then towards the back of the fish, towards the tail, I had sort of a few random black scales. So I might draw just a few of these in sort of at random. And then right toward the very back of the tail, I actually just created some sort of interesting texture by using um, stippling. So I'm sort of taking the, the tip of my brush and just dabbing it in the shape of those scales, but also then just sort of at random, a little bit down the end of that tail there. And then for the eyes, I went sort of, um, so here, this is like where I've made a little error in my drawing on this one. I forgot to leave the eye right here. So if you're using the, the Canton paper, that's not, um, it's not a cotton paper, you should be able to almost fully remove some white here. And then just dab it away so I can bring my sort of my little eyeball back. Um, if not, you could add, sometimes people add acrylic or gouache over if they need to bring back some white, or we can just work with the fact that it's blue um, and not really, just not panic about it. So for the eye around here, I'm just gonna do my little sphere and then sort of outline the eye shape and I'm just sort of being a little bit loose and sketchy with this just because it's kind of a delicate part of the fish so I don't want it to be too um I don't want it to be too solid or harsh and I think this is probably fairly dry I might wait for that okay so for the ends of the fish of the the little um the fins, I just try to go really lightly. Um, near the body, I'm going to add a little bit more. So it's a little bit darker in toward the body. And then I'm just sort of following the shape that it's curving and doing really thin lines toward the ends because the fins are really delicate. So I want my lines to also be delicate. And I'm looking for any indents that I have and or any ridges and sort of 
outlining those and then maybe doing a second little line into any other like joining edges. You don't need to add too many either. You can kind of keep it minimalistic. Here I'm just going to add a few under this. And I want to continue on both sides of this water ripple. And then the same thing for the tail. I'm going to have to flip my paper for that. I'm just going to flip this around because it's easier for my hands to move on an arc. Actually, I'm going to move it this way. So to do circles, it's easier for you to sort of plant your wrist on the table and then use a pivot point. So because this is curving this way, I like to tilt my paper so that I can take advantage of this this motion. And then this one kind of curves this way. So I'm going to tilt the paper again so I can get in there. This is one thing, sometimes I draw in Photoshop, but I really don't like doing it because I can't actually turn my wake up so that I can take advantage of this little turned paper trick. All right. And now that this is dry, I'm going to go over my little eyeball on this side. Okay, and then for the lily pads, it's basically the exact same thing. Uh, for the outside of them. The inside, I was actually using my pen over the top because then I could get really thin line. So here, actually, I'm going to put a lily pad for you just so you can see. So I didn't go around the center point here. Um, and then with the paint, I wanted to create some areas that are sort of like outlined without edges. Let me see if I have another one. Yeah, so there's some that are just like lighter with paint and then I drew over so we can kind of and I did this with pen, these little lines and then the rest I did with the ink. So I'm going to just do the outlines for now and I'm not doing that little center point. So anything that's kind of like flipping up, I maybe want it to be lighter. And then anything that's like near the water or going downwards, I can just kind of vary the, vary the weight of that line to sort of help it feel like it's curving. So I might go thick on the upward motion and then stay really thin on the top so that I can feel that it's curving upwards. And again, don't be afraid to flip your paper around. Just don't knock over your ink. <laughs> I'm always worried about this. And then, so I know that this curves this way, so I my hand moves better in this direction. And again, I can go press down to get a more curvy line. And then this is sort of the top part of that lily pad there, so I can let it go back to being a little bit more thin.
And then down here, I'm going to go nice and thin up next to the fish here. And then as it curves under, I'm going to let that thicken out a bit by just drawing my hand down and then using the body of the brush. And then sort of going thick up into that curve as it turns up and then thin it back out again. And let it sort of thicken back down. The flowers we'll do separately, so we'll just do the lily pads for now. The flowers I use the pen because they're so delicate. I wanted a nice thin line around them. One thing to avoid doing is going over a line and then trying to go back over it. Um, it's better if you can just sort of relax and get it correct the first time, because if you have to end up going over it, I find it just ends up looking a little bit jagged. I'm going to go a little bit heavy underneath there. And then as it curves up, because it's flipping upwards, I'm going to go nice and thin. You also want to watch putting your hand down. So this is all wet right now, so I'm just going to flip my paper. Sort of the thick on the bottom here. And then let it go thin on the top. And then again, add a little bit of extra volume coming up into that curve and then let it sort of taper out. Let's see, I've added two things here. This is hilarious. <laughs> I'm just going to remove this one and keep this one down here. It was probably supposed to be this one, but then I just messed up my drawing. That's fine. Sometimes I do this a few times before I get the exact image that I want. And it can also be good on these to start with the fish first, actually, and then do the background later. I just thought it would be easier to um, So my, my computer uh, overheated. I'm going to have to turn my little fan on and it shut down. <laughs> okay. So it seems like everything's fine now. Okay. Cool. 
Sorry about that. We'll continue. So you should have something sort of like this for today. Um, so like the black drawn on the fish and then your little lily pads outlined and your fish sort of outlined and then we'll we'll go in with the colors next class. How are you guys doing? You're good? Yeah. I want to see you when we're done, when you're done. There we go. Yeah, can you guys unmute? Ask you to. <laughs> Want to see how it's going? Not too bad, I think. Oh, nice. Looking good. But I don't know. Uh, did I have to make all over there? Um, only if you want to. So, I mean, we're designing our own fish. So, like, okay. on, on this one. For example, I've got some white coming in on this side and then like put orange sort of all over. So you don't have to follow like the exact thing. Um, let me see if I can find my other fishes. I have so many. <laughs> I did so many little fish sketches. Um, let's see, just a sec. I like to do pages of things. Um, it's disappeared. But you can see like, I think this is sort of, yeah, this is sort of the one that I, followed um so he's just got splotches everywhere so you could have even done the black there All so right. if you want to leave that and just go in with like orange or white or purples or blues we'll do that we're gonna add the color next class that looks good and yeah yeah it looks good nice yeah, job cool. linda yours is better than mine you're taking the time <laughs> <laughs> yeah it is Ah, no, it's a valetien. Huh? And looks good. Your camera's green right now. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, it's fine. It's green. It's green. It's fine? Oui, on voit ça, on voit l'écran vert. Ok. C'est plus bleu, un peu comme je t'avais envoyé. Ok. Yeah, it looks good when I saw. Ok. Awesome. Do you guys have any questions? No, it was cool. cool. <laughs> yeah. It's a fun little technique. Yes. Yeah, and then when we go over it with the color, that's the next really fun part. So it'll start making more sense all together. <laughs> so, uh, so we gonna see the, the fish, uh, other color for the fish, and for the yeah, fire, so, it's gonna be yeah. another next class we're gonna do the color um so we've got if everyone can just finish like their black and white outlines um you don't have to do the flower or the inside of the lily pads because we're gonna use uh if you have pen we'll use pen otherwise you can just keep using the ink later but i know that i'm not gonna like how my pen sits so i have these micron pens these are like art pens and they say waterproof, but every time I draw with them and go over with water, I find I get a little bit of a smudging. It might just be my paper, um, but I don't like it. So I tend to wait and do these at the end, even though they say waterproof. Um, so we'll do the color next of the fish and the lily pads um, next class. And then we'll like finish off. And then the very last class I have, um, I'm going to show you how I make stuff like this <laughs> out of these little watercolors. But I used to, anyways, I used to do them like this. And then I changed my method because I got into too many, I painted myself into too many corners that way. So I'll show you how I sort of really quickly adapted my workflow specifically for like print on demand. Because it's interesting. Right. And you can probably use it later. <laughs> So yeah. So, 
Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Bye, bye, sweet puppy here. And bye. I bye, bye, Anne. Bye. Here and Rosie. Hi, puppies. Est-ce que ça enregistre toujours euh, la vidéo? Oui, mais je peux arrêter. <laughs> This is the bye, everybody, from my puppy. Bye-bye. See you next week. Okay.